Hey YouTubers, sorry we haven't been putting videos up. Our, uh, our DVR has been trashed, uh, but we did get a replacement, so hopefully we'll get some new videos out there soon. But for right now, I'm doing a special little project for my daughter. Uh, both my daughters actually love to share it, but uh, let me show you what I'm working on here. Okay, so I'm working on this. It's the Pi Girl Raspberry Pi Game Boy. Uh, it uses a Raspberry Pi and a 3D printed case, which I've already made on our 3D printer. Got the Raspberry Pi, the um, the SD card. It's uh, it's running uh, Distro of Linux that uh, was made by Adafruit for the uh, Pi Cade. So it uh, should be kind of cool. And lots of room for uh, to put on ROMs and stuff like that. I got the, uh, you can see in here inside the anti-static wrap is a little touch screen. Cable, this will be to interface uh, the I.O. of the um, Pi to this controller here that we're going to, I'm going to hack this up and uh, use it in the, in the device. Uh, lithium battery, it's uh, 2200 milliamp hours. And this is the, uh, the USB jack, a little switch. And uh, this is a little power booster. This is going to take the um, the five volt um, two amps from a USB charger or one amp or whatever you got, and uh, scale this down. It's, it's got a charge circuit for the uh, lithium battery, so it's going to be able to charge it up. And it has a little jumper in there. You can see it. This is sorry, I'm having to use my iPhone. Uh, but if you can see this little spot down here under my thumb, um, when you jump those leads, you get half an amp uh, of current. So that'll allow us to charge the battery faster. So that's something we're going to be doing. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is my little lab at work. Uh, we've got some stuff here. Osco, my Hanko uh, <coughs> uh, soldering iron. Over here, some yeah, soldering reflow station, random, uh, more random equipment, uh, just projects and stuff for work. And uh, this thing here, this is really cool. The Hendo 808 D soldering kit. This is like a vacuum solder gun, and uh, what it does is heats up the leads, and you push in the the. Uh, the trigger and it just sucks the solder right off and it makes uh, removing parts really 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 easy just effortless it's it's not cheap um, it's it costs almost two hundred dollars but it's worth every penny if you're doing a lot of uh, electronics work and you're having to remove parts uh, and then it uh, it really okay, so here's handy. our our screen it's a, a TFT touch screen it's uh, by Adafruit. It's made especially for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so what we're going to do is going to turn this over now. <coughs> uh, you need to go ahead and solder on these connectors like this in this configuration, uh, making sure that uh, the open space is uh, facing toward the rest of the board, toward the uh, ribbon cable. You don't, you can take that ribbon cable off to remove the TFT screen if you need to. Uh, but those can be kind of hard to reconnect. It's, you can see it's, it's pretty loose, just to make it easier to get in here and solder these connections. I'm not gonna record myself soldering because uh, I don't have that many hands. So, well, I'll, uh, I'll resume the okay, video. Here's one, of the, uh, one of the ports is put on here now. I'm sorry, I can't get this thing to focus up close, but uh, there's just a little bit of solder flux on there, but all the, uh, the leads are on there if they're soldered well. Um, so there it is. I'll go ahead and put on the, uh, the next one. And there you go. Ports are on there. All done. Now we'll move over to the power modules. Okay, here's for the power system. We've got the battery, connectors, um, on-off switch. Uh, these are some wires that we are going to use to connect the switch. Uh, I got just cut off a piece of wire. I didn't record that. Um, the um, 
can see this if I can get in close. But I'll zoom in. There we go. This is the battery charger module. And this is the little power boost module over here. Uh, now what we're going to do is um, I'm going to jump these two cables. See, it says 500 MA. So uh, jumping this point here will give us 500 milliamps. So that will that'll charge up this battery a lot quicker than you know, if we just left it by itself. Uh, so that'll be nice. Less time it has to be plugged in, the more time we can play, right? So, grenades are soldered now, and the jumper's done. You can see that the uh, the light is green. Um, that's good. Okay, now the uh, the switch control is connected to the, uh, the port labeled ground and EN. So I'm just uh, soldering those to the switch now, using this uh, helping hands thing. These come in handy if you don't have one. Uh, you might want to pick one up. Okay, now that we got all this stuff hooked up, we got the switch on. Uh, we can turn it on and off. Cool, huh? Okay, next step is to prepare the cable. You're going to snip off one end. Make sure you snip the <laughs> the correct end um, because the pins are going to be numbered. So you're going to do that right. Okay, so uh, I've got the cable set up here uh, we didn't need the last six pins uh, the last six wires so I cut them off I also removed uh, wires 4, 8, 10, 17, 18, and 19 uh, because they won't be used <coughs> uh, this cable is going to provide I.O. Uh, from it's going to get input from the uh, this controller actually the, some of the guts of it this is a like a Re remade type uh, Super Nintendo controller um, but uh, it was cheap and we just need some of the guts out of here so um, I'm going to take this apart and use the PCB solder these connections onto it and that's what we're going to use to control it as the, uh, the controller pull it apart here and man oh man Ugh. that's crusty Ugh, that's uh, cheap, cheap, cheap electronics here, and oh my goodness, that's just, I don't know what that is, some kind of weird flux maybe, it's it's a mess, um, <laughs> hopefully, I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine, because I'm just going to be chopping this up into little pieces, but uh, yeah, yuck. Here we are. I've got the uh, the pipe booting up. <coughs> uh, I'm gonna have to find a USB keyboard around here somewhere, so I can interface with this thing and uh, change the configuration so that the uh, the screen shifts this way instead of this way. Um, and I'm gonna have to do some things like resize the partition on the SD card and uh, stuff like that. And once that's done, I'll test out the the buttons and the the input to make sure that they work and all that good stuff so you know little by little it's getting getting closer to being done okay I've got this uh, the machine going down rebooting uh, changing the orientation of the screen so that it's no longer vertical um, but it'll be horizontal so that'll be easier to use now. It's just hooked up to this little USB keyboard. And see here it is. It's no longer vertical, it's horizontal now. So we'll move on to the next stuff. I'm gonna continue working on this, uh, testing out buttons, getting it working. Okay, so now we've got to um, we got to solder wires number uh, number two to the positive and wire six needs to be soldered into the negative to the little power boost module down here so I'm going to do that now uh, I got held back <clears throat> for several days it was not working the um, it seemed like there was a problem with the the key mapping into the IO on the uh, Raspberry Pi and this is a, uh, a version 2 or not version 2 but a version of uh, B so it's got the 512 meg of RAM but apparently uh, the Cupcade ROM the uh, the OS has a uh, 
a little program that runs in the background called Retro Game, and the mapping of the uh, the keys was done for the version two board. Now I've had this board for several years. I got it right after it came out, uh, and used it for a couple of things. So I'm just basically repurposing it. But apparently there is a little bit of a difference in the I/O from the version one to the version two. If you buy your board new, you probably won't have this problem. But if you um, if you didn't, if you were like me and you're using an older Pi, you may have an issue. So you'll have to go and um, change a few things in the uh, in the C program, recompile and uh, reinstall it, and then it should work fine. The buttons should work. Uh, you'll know if you have this issue if you get it all up and running and the uh, the A button left button and right buttons do not work properly um, that's probably what your problem is you probably have a version one board so you need to uh, make changes to the file and recompile uh, so I'll probably post some notes in the about section of this video if I can remember to do that if not comment and remind me and tell me you're stuck and I will find it and uh, and I'll send you the link something I did real quick here um, I put the power switch on uh, first, but then I realized it was really hard to actually get it into this little spot here. So I ended up cutting the wires and feeding it through this way from the outside. Uh, that was a lot easier to get it in. Now it works, so I just I just trimmed the leads <coughs> and um, I'm gonna put a little heat shrink on there to keep them uh, happy. But uh, you may want to do that before you um, you know go ahead and put the switch in before you solder the connections so you don't have that happen to you okay, and I've got that done I've got the buttons on here now Excuse me. <coughs> I got the buttons lined up you've got to get these things lined up pretty much exact then the um, on their website that or for website they recommend using that blue tack I didn't have any of that so I used some of this 3m uh, double-sided uh, spongy material uh, it's used when you want to stick something to the wall so I, I used that and I moved these over it took some trial and error I think I got them right but um, I'm going to go ahead and put the buttons the membranes on here and then the buttons on and uh, can see if it works. <coughs> I've got this thing put together got the buttons lined up loaded a um, NES test ROM Buttons seem to work okay. So, um, yeah, it, it worked. Uh, it didn't quite go together so great down here in the bottom. I don't know if there was um, some thermal warping uh, from my print or what. So. Um, didn't quite snap together so great right there. It could just be my printer uh, being a little bit wonky, but hey, I mean it works. I'm happy. So yeah, there it is. If you've got any questions, feel free to comment. Uh, please subscribe to our channel, and hey, come on, give me a thumbs up. You know you want to.